smart contracts go live on Cardano? Will it shake DeFi for emerging markets? And what novel value will Cardano bring to the crowded world of NFTs? That's just two, but what are the top five smart contract use cases? Stick around for that list. Welcome to Word on the Block on Real Vision, the series that takes a deeper dive into blockchain and the emerging technologies that shape our world at the intersection of business, politics, and economy. I'm Forecast News Editor-in-Chief, Angie Lau. Cardano's Alonzo Hard Fork, the smart contract upgrade, is now live. And what better time to do so than in the middle of the NFT and DeFi boom? But Cardano has bigger plans that extend beyond collectibles and farming yield. The project also hopes to be the financial bridge to the trillions of dollars of illiquid wealth in emerging markets such as Africa. Now, earlier this year, Cardano announced a partnership with the Ethiopian Ministry of Education to develop blockchain IDs for its 5 million students. That's the same blockchain that is now ready to host decentralized finance applications on its ecosystem. And joining me today is the founder of IOHK and Cardano, a co-founder of Ethereum, Charles Hoskinson. Charles, welcome back to the show. Angie, thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure. I, you know, the last time we talked, we talked about just this, this application of blockchain and how it really can transcend um, borders and, and bring kind of liquidity to the illiquid uh, wealth that uh, we've been talking about trapped in so many parts of this world, in Asia, in Africa, in so many continents. And now, fast forward to today, smart contracts have finally arrived to the Cardano ecosystem. Supporters have been very excited for this upgrade. We've been monitoring this very closely. So let's just start there. Can you walk us through the Alonzo hard fork of September 12th. Give us a quick behind the scenes description from your team, the community, as you kind of counted it down to hit zero. Well, this was the, the terminus of a kind of a three hard fork combinator event. We, uh, we did one in December of last year where we added metadata support and then we added native multi-asset support with the Mary hard fork. And I think that was May. And then uh, we finally got full smart contract support here in September. Uh, and every time we added this functionality, the community was very happy to use that functionality. Uh, so with metadata, for example, that enabled the possibility of the Minister of Education deal with Ethiopia and the ability to add identity to transactions and all kinds of things. Uh, with uh, native multi-asset that made us an NFT contender, over 70,000 have been issued on Cardano already prior to the uh, hard fork that occurred just yesterday. And then obviously with uh, the hard fork combinator event uh, yesterday, we now have the ability to run Pluto scripts, which is the foundational component upon which dApps will be constructed. So there's a lot more to do. You know, there's more infrastructure to construct. You know, there's dApp stores that will come and all kinds of clever, crazy scalability solutions that will come. But basically, this is like having the Ethereum virtual machine. It's having a foundation upon which you can run smart contracts and we have certainly a lot in queue. Uh, we launched one yeah. yesterday. It was one of the first on the network to name my lobster on the uh, on the microphone. We already had 74 people participate in that one. And it'll stop after, I think, either 350 or 500 do. Uh, so little stuff like that is, is definitely coming. And uh, throughout the next few months, uh, all those big ecosystem maps that you see people tweet again and again and again, a lot of those logos in the ecosystem maps will be launching products on Cardano and We'll take a look and see how competitive they are and, you know, if they achieve liquidity or not. So it's certainly a, a major milestone uh, for the project as a whole. But, you know, it's just a day. And yeah. what's really defined Cardano has been this meticulous, relentless marathon-like pace where every day we make progress, every day we make progress. There are some days that are slow days and other days like yesterday that are major events. Uh, but uh, we're in it for the long haul, and it's really exciting to see what's going to happen in 2022 and 2023 as the system is waking up and millions of users come in and what experiences they construct with the model. Well, I mean, I mean, I remember when we talked a couple of years ago and I was still grilling you on why are you using Haskell as a coding uh, uh, language? It's it's just really, you know, it's elegant, it's it's gorgeous, it's academic, but very few people use it. I think we were just talking about just the, the micro uh, aspect of what you're building. And now, you know, now 
amongst the audience are traditional, are institutional people, are professional people. They are not blockchain people. They're not dev people. Uh, they probably are just learning what dApps are. Uh, they hear about Cardano as an Ethereum killer. They don't even know necessarily what that means. What we all know uh, and what everybody knows paying attention to this is Cardano is now the third largest uh, market cap uh, cryptocurrency uh, right now. And with Alonzo bringing that smart contract functionality, we are actually closer to that characterization of Ethereum killer, if you want to call it that, if, if it's that competitive a space. But it really is interesting that as, as you've just kind of put your head down and the community got to work and the devs got to work, that this space also evolved alongside with you. And now we meet again. We're not talking about Haskell anymore. We're talking about Plutus core. Uh, we're not talking about, you know, building it up to smart contract. We are here now. You have smart contract functionality. And now as people take a look at your market cap, um, how Cardano and ADA is functioning um, in even the market space, how are you bringing the, the 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 real world along with you and and how does it feel right now to kind of be in this moment that you envisioned all along uh, well i mean six years of effort to, to get there and uh, it was not for lack of trying i mean we wrote over 110 papers 111 papers probably 116 on the website now wow. a million plus lines of code uh, a lot of a lot of people came and went and uh, it's it's a really bittersweet moment you know first mm -hmm. They always say, well, why did it take so long to get here? You know, what could we have done to have shaved a year off or, you know, a month off here and there? And you always think, God, I should have built this before I built that, or I should have invested more in this technology instead of that technology. If you're really thinking about a product, you're never happy because you, all, all you can see are the things you've done wrong in the product, not the things <laughs> that you've done right. Even if you've done a lot right, there's always yeah. a, a problem right, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, we don't regret certain fundamental things like the choice of Haskell as a programming language. It enabled us the ability to get a, a much higher level of assurance that the things we were doing were correct. Not completely flawless, but the set of bugs were much smaller. And, you know, given that more than a billion dollars of money has been stolen from bad DeFi designs and, you know, poor smart contract designs, that really shows you there's a strong need in the industry for certified software, for software that's high assurance, especially given the evaluations that these platforms have. We're not valuing them at startups. We're valuing them as if they're Fortune 250 companies. So if that's the case, then you have to actually have infrastructure like your Google or Facebook, or at least aspire to do these things. And so we just kind of did it up front these other guys are trying to figure out how to get there themselves. In terms of being an Ethereum killer, you know, the, the best Ethereum killer in the space is Ethereum, you know, because they're <laughs> creating Ethereum 2, you know, and yeah. when Ethereum 2 is created, Ethereum 1 dies. So everybody acknowledges that that model is not sustainable and they're trying to now move to a new model. Well, we're first to market with proof of stake in that respect. And ours, in our view, is better than theirs. We don't require bonding or slashing and we have over 70% participation and the system is remarkably stable. We can do seamless upgrades like yesterday was just an event. Nothing went down. There was no catastrophic collapse. Half the nodes didn't, you know, decohere with each other or something. It, it just worked. Uh, so we think that that's a testimony to doing the work up front. And that's a very competitive model. Uh, that said, in terms of real world use cases, we tend to think of real FI, not DeFi. And, you know, real FI is DeFi plus, plus, plus. There's other mm -hmm. stuff you add on. You need to have identity. You need to have metadata. You need to have a strategy for how compliance is going to work as Uniswap is starting to learn. Um, you're, you know, you need to have governance. Like how you claim it's not centralized. Well, then who upgrades it? A single company? No, you know, well, you need a voting system. Well, we pre-built a lot of these things. We have Prism for identity. We have a metadata standard. We have Catalyst for governance. And when you issue a native asset on Cardano next year, that native asset, you can use that to vote. Just like you, ha you can vote with ADA right now. So you, you have basically one of the best decentralized organizations as a piece of common shared infrastructure. So a lot of the design choices that we made, the market's not even aware of those choices mm -hmm. yet. And throughout this year and next year, they'll slowly get aware. And they'll get aware through progress because there's all kinds of things that are in the commercial pipeline that will come online over the next six months to a year. And those things will bring millions of users into Cardano. And then we'll also be EVM backward compatible as well. So if you're an Ethereum developer and 
getting tired of paying all your fees and you just take your solidity code and run it on Cardano, you know, through a side chain. So all those things are coming and, you know, that we have direct line of sight to how they're going to come and what we're going to do to, to get them into the system. And it's just better, faster and cheaper on our system. And also if you care to do things the right way and write software the right way, the, the program, the platform, it works with you instead of against you. Mm -hmm. When you look at Solidity, it's very hard in that model to actually get high assurance that the application's right. And there's some companies like Runtime Verification and Certa K and others that actually specialize in that. And you have to spend a lot of money and time and effort to get to a baseline of assurance where you think what you've written is correct. Tools like Plutus, they work with you. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.